morning, good morning. It is day 321 of From Here to Jerusalem. <sighs> Today is the day I walk into the center of Sofia. Sofia, Sofia. And uh, yeah, yesterday I had a day off. Uh, I was offered to go and see uh, Monastery Dzidzinski. Dzidzinski, Dzidzinski. And meet the abbot there and see how they how they live it is oh my like uh, so we drove we drove to the to the south of Sofia uh, Silka and myself and we spent some time there and it was stunning and then we went to see uh, some frescoes from the 11th century and in the area where some of the crusaders came through. So I was again like in medieval Roman history heaven. Uh, it was absolutely stunning. Now, I'm gonna go have a cup of coffee here with the lads that I met the other day in uh, face food. There they are. And then I'm, uh, I'm, heading, uh, I'm heading into town. I've got about five kilometers to do and uh, I should be there. Fantastic. And then tomorrow what is going to happen is uh, I have another interview with uh, Bulgaria Euronews and then I'm heading uh, out of the city. Bulgaria so far, oh my god, it's been amazing. I'm going to say hello and then I'm uh, moving on. Some tippity chips, because as you do, you know, at the end of the morning, why not? Uh, need your strength. So, can't believe 321 days of from here to Jerusalem, walking from West Cork to Jerusalem with a harp on your back. Sean the harp is here, Jerry the stick is here, my good self. The sun is blazing. It must be over 15 degrees because I'm sweating like an otter. Uh, These are always the hard bits. I keep saying the same thing over and over again. Urban centers are hard to walk into. And I don't mind city walking. I used to uh, walk Amsterdam at night and Paris at night. You know, less traffic, a uh, different perspective. But during the day, walking into any city, it is hard because the traffic is dense. Uh, the air isn't great, uh, people are busy, they have no time for, you know, souls like myself. Uh, the lads offered me water again, like I said, I have enough holy water to keep me going for a while. Uh, so yesterday, the monastery, so, man oh man oh man, uh, these uh, monks and sisters, they, uh, their, uh, their right comes from uh, Mount Athos in Greece and, uh, oh hello, they're beautiful, and, uh, which is the mountain where no women are allowed, so I'm not even allowed to go there. And the river that flows behind the mountain, behind that mountain, the Black Mountain, goes all the way to the Mediterranean and comes out into the Mediterranean straight across from Mount Athos. So they're related, like they are connected through the river system in Bulgaria and Greece. How amazing, right? You couldn't make it up. But this is the thing. 
You couldn't make it up if you tried. While I'm there, the abbot tells me that he knows this monk in Greece that uh, who, who walked at the end of the Soviet era from Vladivostok to Jerusalem well, then, and uh, made it. Like when he left, the borders were actually not open. They weren't open. You couldn't get to where he wanted to go. But he set off. He walked for about two and a half years. By the time he got there, it was 1992, 93. 92, he's told me. And uh, yeah, he made it. Like, and he said to me, like, it was like a demon was in his head saying, like, you cannot get over those borders. You can't do that. You can't go to these countries. And he was not a, a believer at the time at all. He had no religion. And he is now a brother on Mount Athos. The abbot put us in touch. Um, obviously, my Russian is non existent. Uh, my Greek is also non existent. But he spoke a tiny bit of English. And uh, we talked about because the question of fear and the impossibility of this journey is coming up regularly now. <sighs> All I'll say about it is it's not in my hands. It's not up to me to decide whether I'll make it, yes or no. This went for every pilgrim that went before me as well. It is not up to us to decide, oh, you know, I'm gonna plan this in such a way and I'll get there. Yes, you can say, you can choose to book everything in advance. You can try all of these things. There's no guarantee. On foot, there's no guarantee that you will make it. So, it's out of my hands. And uh, I'm gonna keep going until, I g until I'm stopped somehow. That brings up the other question, which is why? I think I said something about this already in a video two days ago. I don't need a why. <laughs> I'm a pilgrim. I walk pilgrimage. I'm on foot, on my own power, on my way to a place which is very powerful. After we, s we visited the monastery yesterday, we went to another monastery near Z Zemen. Zemen Monastery has a tiny little square church which has been restored. And they found frescoes from the 11th century in there. And they say that the altar is a holy stone and uh, you can make a wish there. We walk into this building, there we go there, landscape is incredible. The mountains are, you know, heavy on both sides. And you're in this tiny little square building. You walk in, it is freezing cold inside. And I'm uh, looking around at the frescoes and then I look at the altar and I walk up to it and put my hands on it. And it was like, like literally like arrows were going up my arms. I don't know, I'm not a great voodoo voodoo person, but uh, it was there. I could feel it. I made my wish. It's very clear what it is that I want. And uh, today we walk again. Okay, now enough of all this stuff. I'm gonna go do the last few kilometers and uh, all I can hope for is that uh, those who don't understand are willing to still root for me and not go straight up. Oh, it's nonsense. It's not possible. It can't be done. You shouldn't be doing this. I hope that they'll give me the benefit of the doubt, give the universe the benefit of the doubt and allow for the roads to be opened both ways not just one way because I'm hoping that uh, the road to and from the east will be reopened for all of us both ways 
that's what I hope. Okay, there we go. <laughs> uh, I could cry now. There we go. Papa, he comes to me, he takes my hand. We walk by the sea, the old Irish Harper. He comes my way, we walk together from Dublin to Bray. He says, Lift your feet. For that's what we need. We need dance, we need song. So keep playing strong. That's what your gift. That is how you must live. That is how it must be. It'll set us all free. The old Irish harper. He comes to me, he takes my hands, he says we are free. The old Irish harper, he comes my way, he holds. So, I'm a... Uh... Heading to the center now. Uh, I just spoke to Brother Daniel and they're in the church waiting for me. So I can just head there. I should be there in about 20 minutes, half an hour. Oh gosh, like if I could feel like this every day, that'd be amazing. I'm not carrying my full pack. Uh, if I could just get rid of the things that I actually don't use every day, it would be wonderful. <sighs> Fear, huh? Here it's a strange thing. Okay, last bit. Here we go. The sun and the moon, he says, don't you fret, we'll meet again soon. Just follow the road, don't forget to play harp, and don't close those green eyes, you've got to stay sharp. The old Irish harper, he comes to me, he takes my hand and says you are free. The old Irish harper, he cannot stay, he says his goodbyes in the center of Bray. I follow the road from north to south, sing my songs as freely as if we were about. Never close my eyes, play my harp every day, cause I know when he comes, he'll come my way. The old Irish harper, He'll come to me, he'll take my Right. So I arrived and uh, into St. Joseph's here, the Capuchin, uh, uh, with the Capuchin brothers. Um, Brother Daniel welcomed me and um, yeah. I was given food. It's it's always good when they give me food. Um, so there was this lady. Uh, she was. Uh, I said to her, "I'm moving in. you I love your cooking." <laughs> then we had a discussion about um, 
uh, what was it? Uh, kebab. And this Bulgarian guy said, kebab is like meat in sauce. You, you guys in Western Europe, you don't understand. Like, you don't understand. And she showed me a photograph of what, what Bulgarians say is kebab. And then she said, how long was I staying? Because she can make me kebab. <laughs> then I had a, a bit of a rest because I'm, I'm just constantly tired. Like, look, look at me. Like, and I'm not doing anything weird. I haven't even drunk today anything like just water tea and coffee um yeah brother daniel has made me a, a bed here in a meeting room and uh he kind of went like how long are you staying I, said, I, don't, I don't i don't know so tomorrow i'm meeting with a friend of my friend eva maria in berlin uh and i'm doing an interview for bulgaria uh euro news doesn't mean anything like Euronews is such a big, such a big, um, uh, Euronews is so big, like it goes through the whole of Europe. Um, it's a very young reporter. Uh, I'm going to find it. We're going to find out. Uh, I was uh, originally I was going to go back to sleep, but I'm having issues with my um with my route and now I'm thinking maybe I should just stay here so I have to still let let her know because uh, I, I don't want her to feel like I'm ungrateful but I had such a lovely time with her maybe I could just meet with her here in in uh, I, I don't know I have to think about it I have to actually look at the route um, because the route that for now I am looking at taking I'm not going to enjoy it. So this is the deal. Bulgaria, via militaris, is like, oh, big roads. But there is, like, I saw yesterday in, in the mountains, this is a beautiful country, and there's loads of small tracks and small roads, so I don't have to walk those big roads if I don't want to. But... The route then all of a sudden becomes like a whole lot, a whole lot more. So I have to, I have to kind of think uh, what what it is I want to do. Uh, I'm I'm gonna sit on the route now. I'm gonna just sit on it, think about it, and uh, make a decision so that I can let everybody know. Uh, so I walked pretty. Do you know if I could just walk with my clothes and harp? Uh, and the sleeping bag, I would be so, so happy. Um, I would be so, so happy. But I needed a long skirt going into a further, further southeast. Um, I need to start covering my legs if I want to not be, not have those experiences with those drivers stopping and, and, heck. I don't I don't enjoy it so I'm going to really display like the religious bits and uh, I'm going to cover myself up further because I don't want the hassle because uh, you're vulnerable out on those big roads I don't and I don't want to be on those big roads in the villages they'll leave me alone on the big roads, you get all the, the people going between the cities and you also get like the, 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 the men. I don't want it. I don't want it. So I, well, there you go. There are my answers. The answers are there. So the, the route, depending on how you go, you can go anywhere. I could be out of here in 270 kilometers, 280 kilometers to 500 kilometers. Double it. Um, so it depends what I want to see. It depends what I want to do. And uh, I need to go look at it now, today. Uh, feeling good? Feeling good? Feeling good. I had a really interesting chat with uh, Brother Daniel. And it was something else that I was thinking about uh, after what I was talking about this afternoon, um, 
with uh, you know this idea of of pilgrimage i i don't want to say you know i believe let me put it this way i believe in miracles i believe everything is possible my dream is to walk to jerusalem if your dream is big enough and you you put your feet on the road you make your dreams come true i don't believe that uh, you know but i believe that reality is what it is i i know i know there is obstacles ahead i know it's not going to be easy um but i don't feel it that way <laughs> i don't feel it that way um, because all I do is deal with what is right in front of me. So I'm not speculating. I'm not saying things are not true or true or possible or not possible. I have a dream and I'm putting one foot in front of the other. That's the way to make a dream come true. If you want to eat a car, start chewing. Uh... Yeah, I'm having a, a problem with one of my ingrown toenails. I've been cutting bits out and it's still bothering me. So I've cut more out. Now it really sore. So I hope uh, that is alleviated by tomorrow. There's still so much to see here. Uh, oh, and we had, so with Brother Daniel, I had a, a long chat about the differences between Orthodoxy and Catholicism. And really, like he, he he does both rites, so Orthodox Catholic Orthodox rite and the Catholic rite. And he was saying, like, really, apart from you know the obvious one, the Catholics have a pope, and uh, the Orthodox don't, so they don't have one guy who's the boss. Oh, and on that note about Catholics having a pope. There has been a, there is a, from certain areas, there's a lot of criticism, a uh, lot of pretty, you know, dogmatic uh, Catholics are very critical of this Pope. But I just, I was thinking about this today. There is a thing about the Pope being infallible. Like if you're really, really an orthodox, like if you're not, not orthodox, if you're really dogmatic Catholic, sorry, lads. You can't criticize the Pope because if you're that dogmatic, you believe that the Pope is infallible. This man cannot make any mistakes. So you've got to stop, you know, complaining. You can't apply one part of the law and then not apply the other part of the law. If he, if he gets to change stuff, then he changes stuff because he is the Pope. That's how it goes. Um, so there is, there is, uh, and there is, uh, there's two main things, is the way they see Mary and the, the head of the church. And those are really the, the only two really, uh, really discernible um, differences. He was saying, you know, this idea of the icons and the statues. Mm, they have statues in, uh, in, in, uh, in in orthodoxy as well and the uh, the the catholics also have icons you know we do we do we have them on the walls everywhere um so we're scrapping that one as as being a difference that is really a cultural difference and not not a religious difference and there are some there is something in the credo which is different as well uh that's Really, he couldn't say that there was more. He said both of it is like, you know, very much, uh, very, very, very similar. Um, and he explained a few things. I had loads of questions, of course, uh, about the frustration for one and um, about, uh, you know, why the iconoclast is there, the, 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 screen uh, the screen and he said it, it wasn't always like that it only started being like that in the year 800 which is also interesting because orthodoxy claims to be like the original right and the catholics change it over time you know the catholics claim that they you can't change anything in catholicism 
but they've been changing stuff all over the time, all over history, of course, because because they have popes, so they always leave uh, they leave something behind. Every pope leaves something behind. So it's it's uh, it's it's interesting because I never get to really think about these things or uh, spend time thinking about these things. Now I do, and it's nice. It's nice. I've got this really nice cross in the it's a big room. Normally they have meetings here, seminars and stuff. There's a black board, whiteboard there as well, my my towel. <laughs> uh, then across the hall they also have AA. <laughs> so they're they're very like the the mission here is is uh, one of of uh, of you know uh, of of being being present and. Uh, um, working with uh, the, the expat community, the Catholic expat community here, and it's very different to a lot of the other missions. Uh, they're, they're, it's, it's nice. It's nice being here, and I'm very grateful to be here. Um, I was really, I went to Maso this evening, and although I couldn't understand any of it, uh, the priest he kind of. He he did a he did a pretty Irish Irish version of mass. It was pretty quick. Um, and tomorrow morning at eight, I'll go to mass again. Uh, yeah, it's it's good because it feels really familiar. This is all really familiar again, and I've been seeing so much unfamiliar stuff. So it's really nice. Uh, yeah, I have to I have to figure out the route. Like uh, I I. I loved, you know, seeing the original um, paving of the Via uh, Via Militaris, and I'm, I don't know, I feel, I, f I feel like crying now. <laughs> I, I suppose it's uh, out of joy. I, I'm, I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> I'm really happy. I'm really happy. It's been a really, really, really good. Um, it's a really good experience. I'm having a really, really good experience. Yeah, Silka was so, so kind driving me around and we went to see all these amazing things. And I really, I was looking at the map today and, you know, I'm so close to Turkey. <laughs> I, I I can't believe I, I'm only a few hundred kilometers away from Turkey. Uh, and I can't believe I saw Istanbul on a sign. It's uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. And I, I can't wait for what's coming next. And I want to take it all in. Uh, I want to see it all and experience it all. And just, yeah, it's wonderful. And then tonight after mass, I came back. Uh, they had a meeting, and I had to toast, <laughs> toast and ice cream. It was great. <laughs> they were like raid the freezers, and I was like, "You should not say that to somebody like me." So I did, I did. I raided the fridge and the freezer, and I made toast. They had one of those toasty machines, <laughs> really nice. There was wild garlic uh, in in there as well. So I had my. Uh, my natural penicillin in and and then i had ice cream because it's lent and here lent is completely different than it is in western europe so <sighs> open heart open mind if it is important open the road before me and i will walk it good night i'll see you tomorrow tomorrow is another day in sophia I'm going to try not do the zigzaggy too much now anymore because I just want to walk. Oh, and where we were yesterday, uh, the little square, the little square church with the altar where you could make the wish. Uh, Barbarossa, the third crusade passed by there. I mean, he he wins the, the battle in Konya. Uh, against the Ottomans, but then it's Silvke, where uh, the, the the guy in uh, in Belgrade said where I should take the boat. He can't there. 
Our brothers had never made it to Jerusalem. There is no guarantee. Good night. Tomorrow is another day. Sophia. Sophia. Today was a good day. See you again tomorrow. Thank you for being here with me. Good night.